Nashukuru bwana kwa sababu ya nafasi hii ya kutupatia kuwa pamoja katika asubuhi ya leo. Ni heshima kubwa sana kanisa la Kristo kukusanyika pamoja kuleta ibada ile tunaita corporate worship mbele zake Mungu na pia kuweza ku fellowship together tunapokuja pamoja tunaimizana neno la Bwana inasema mmoja anakuja na saburi mwingine anakuja na wimbo mwingine amekuja na ndoto mwingine ana maono aliyopewa na Bwana and so we are here so that we can together create a reason to fellowship and enjoy the togetherness and the grow in the Lord kwamba tuweze kukua katika njia za Bwana because you are contributing and I'm contributing. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. Na ndio sababu ibada si kuja kusikiliza neno peke yake. It is just part of the service and sometimes it can not it, it can be not part of the service. Bwana asifiwe. Na maanisha kwamba si kila Jumapili ati ni lazima tuhubiriwe. God can take a different direction. Na hivyo ninaomba ya kwamba Bwana atusaidie tuweze kuwa sensitive to the holy spirit of god tunapokuja kwa ibada na bwana tukampa nafasi ya kunena nasi sio tu kupitia kwa ibada lakini kujua bwana alikuwa katika ibada na alitenda na alinena na alielekeza watu and you be part of that group bwana wetu ainuliwe <clears throat> nataka tusome amos chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 but my theme is on verse 12 na soma mstari wa 11 mpaka 14 just to help you get a understand the context lakini my message is from verse 12 verse 11 says i have through some of you as God of a through Sodom and Gomorrah and you were like a firebrand plucked from the burning yet you have not returned to me says the Lord thus therefore thus will I do to you O Israel because I'll do this to you prepare to meet your God O Israel for behold He who forms mountains and he creates the wind who declares to man what his thoughts is and he makes the morning darkness who treads the high places of the earth the lord god of hosts is his name amen baba wetu tunakuenzi katika asubuhi ya leo tunakuedhimisha na kukupa heshima na mamlaka katika kikao hiki na ibada hii Bwana wetu tuna haja nawe Mungu wetu tunakutazama wewe tunakungojea tunakutumainia tunatarajia kutoka kwako Bwana wa mabwana Mungu wa miungu wewe ambaye hauna mwingine wa kulinganisha naye wala wa kufananisha nawe hakuna tunasema wewe ndiwe Mungu wetu wewe ndiwe tazamio letu na mioyo yetu asubuhi ya leo. Twangoja kutoka kwako. Bana nena nasi, Mungu wa miungu, vunja ngome. Vunja Bwana vikwazo, vizuizi vyote ambavyo vasimama katikati yetu nawe. Twasema ondoa Bwana. Tuondolee katika jina la Yesu. Na Bwana fikia mioyo yetu. <coughs> Bwana fikia mawazo yetu fikia maisha yetu bwana vunja ngome na vikwazo <coughs> katika maisha yetu na katika mioyo na roho zetu na bwana nena nasi tunajua unaweza bwana nena nasi tunajua unaweza tenda makusudi yako tekeleza mapenzi yako nasi tunakuenzi tunakuabudu kwa jina la Yesu tumeomba na kuamini. Amen. You can take your seat. Well, I thank God for his grace and for his love and for his mercies that the Bible say and we are forever. Bwana wetu ainuliwe. 
kwamba neema na rehema za Mungu ni za milele. Na Mungu wetu abadiliki mbali ubadilishe majira so that we can fit. Yeye mwenyewe habadiliki. Lakini uruhusu majira na nyakati zibadilike na tuweze kumuona na kutembea na yeye. Bwana wetu ainuliwe. And God everything that God does kila kitu ambacho Mungu utenda ukitenda kwa sababu na ukitenda kwa kusudi Bwana wetu apewe sifa that everything God will do he is doing it because there is a reason for it and there is a purpose why he wants it to be done na hivyo ni vizuri tuelewe Mungu afanyi kitu chochote bila sababu. Haleluya. Katika maisha yako na katika maisha yangu. Katika njia zetu kama believers na kwetu zote pamoja kama kanisa. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. And it's only bad ni vibaya iwe Mungu anafanya ama Mungu anatenda na sisi hatushikanishi ama hatuelewi kile Mungu anafanya when god is doing and you don't understand then you miss the reason of what god is doing usipoelewa utakosa ni kwa nini utakosa kujua ni kwa nini <coughs> Mungu anafanya kile anafanya and Mungu yeye mwenyewe is a constant god lakini uruhusu majira ya badilike ili aweze kutuingiza katika the right dimension ama mahali tunapostahili kuwa at the right time so i have realized that when you read the word of god utaona so many times that god instituted change in the lives of people and even in nations ya kwamba wakati na wakati mungu alileta mabadiliko na kila mabadiliko bwana aliruhusu yatendekezeke alikuwa na sababu praise god na mungu afanyi mabadiliko ambayo ni katika kusudi lake for his people ili awarudishe nyuma that when god will bring a change in your life he is calling you to a higher place anakuita mali pa juu zaidi ya mali umekuwa and he is calling you to a higher glory than the glory that you are mostly used to kwa ile utukufu umezoea na kwa ile maisha umezoea and i have realized ili mungu aweze kukuinua akutoe from the present you show status of your life na ile mahali umezoea akuweke mahali pengine pa juu he will first call for your attention and your preparedness praise god kwamba mungu atahitaji kwanza apate your personal attention ili uweze kujua kile anataka and the number two, anahitaji ujitayarishe bwana wetu apewe sifa you know god is very real and he wants us to understand him so that we can walk with him and work with him tusipomuelewa tunakosa kutembea naye 
na tunakosa eh, kumtumikia inavyo staili and when god was talking to these men of israel ake nenda kupitia kwa mtumishi amos amos was a contemporary of people like uh, joel and uh, uh, other prophets walio kuwa wakati wake wale tunaita the minor prophets and israeli ilikuwa imeenda into a very low state na mungu alitamani kuwainua mungu alitaka kuwatoa katika hali zingine and awatoe katika ile maisha ya a religion without god maisha ya kwenda kwa ibada kwenda ekaluni na wakutani na Mungu na Mungu alitamani aweze kuwatoa katika utumwa wa dhambi where they were in bondage and they were serving sin at this time Israel ilikuwa imeanguka katika idolatry when God is talking through his servant Amos and his servant Hosea and his servant Joel wanaongelesha Israeli ambayo imeshuka chini in spiritual standards wamerudi katika ibada za idolatry na halotry ile umalaya wa ki ile tunaweza kuita religious za halotry yani wa kidini wana they have polluted the altars of god and the god is very concerned na mambo yale wanafanya and he called them for preparation bwana wetu apoe sifa aliwaita waweze kujiandaa ili wakutane na mungu that's what verse 12 says prepare to meet your god bwana wetu apoe sifa mungu akawaambia sababu mmefanya mambo haya ninataka kufanya kitu katikati yenu and i want to say every time god is about to do something new every time god is about to manifest himself in his people he calls for attention he calls for preparation bana eto pesifa kwamba ndio Mungu aweze kujithibitisha katikati yetu na katika kanisa katika expectation matarajio yale ambao tunataka tumuone Mungu I want you to know God has never visited a people without first calling for preparation kwamba Mungu hajawahi tembelea watu hajawahi tembelea kanisa hajawahi tembelea watu ambao hawako tayari hawajajiandaa for his coming if god will come your way then you must be ready for him kama Mungu atatembea njia yako lazima kwanza uwe umejitayarisha umejiandaa unamngojea you are expecting him god never visits people who are not ready for him bana yesu pesifa i know many times we say oh god i pray that he may visit me are you prepared bana yesu pesifa you know i know very well in our normal life we prepare for the things we want to happen in our lives tunajiandaa when you want to pass an exam what do you do you study you take time you devote yourself you commit yourself to long hours 
of preparation. Why? Because you want to succeed and you want to pass that exam. Bwana asifiwe. When you want to build a house, what do you do? You prepare. You don't wake up in the morning and say I'm putting up a house. Ninataka kusimamisha nyumba hapa. Na unasema by next week nitakuwa ndani. You prepare, you buy materials ama unakusanya pesa, unaweka tayari, unatafuta fundi, unapima nyumba, unaweka pesa ya kulipa mafundi, ya kununua materials na kuhakikisha you have the plan of what you want to do. Thank God that today ukitaka kujenga unaambiwa uko na plan. Kama una kuna wengine watakuitisha plan. <clears throat> Bana asifiwe. And that means preparation. You are preparing yourself. If you want to get into a family life, ukitaka kuwa na jamii, you prepare yourself. Eh, hey, unajiandaa kuoa ama kuolewa and you seek yourself and you prepare yourself to get married and to live in marriage and to carry the baggages and the troubles and the problems and the goodies of marriage uko tayari kuingia katika ndoa but you cannot just jump into the uh, your bandwagon and you are not ready for it taanza kuambia watu mimi niliolewa lakini si kwa tayari and you'll mess up your marriage ikiwa utaingia bila kujitayarisha bwana asifiwe eh hey, lazima mjiandae na muongeleshane are you ready to, to, to fit into my life na wewe unaona kama ninaweza ku fit into your life will you make an adjustment when it is necessary eh hey, mnakubaliana and you talk and you agree and so you get into a marriage and i have realized the things we value the things matter to us when you want to even grow in your career you go back to school you prepare yourself you are eh uh, unajitayarisha ili uweze kuongezeka katika yale ambayo unafikiria yanaweza kuwa faida kwako and when we want to see god <clears throat> when we want to meet with god katika maisha yetu we take it for granted tunaichukulia kwa uraisi sana but i have realized god has never met a people that are not ready for him bana yesu apewe sifa john chapter 14 yesu alisema i go to prepare a place for you bana yetu inuliwe Christ himself you know he said naenda naenda kuandalia makao let not your hearts be troubled msiogope msifadhaike msisumbuke maana i am going to make a place for you so let me tell you believers the issue of how heaven will look like and the splendor and the glamour of heaven is not your problem hiyo sio shida yako somebody is taking care of it because you need to know heaven is a prepared place and so it must be for a prepared people that is why not everybody will get into heaven because bingu imeandaliwa kwa watu wanao stahili tell your neighbor heaven is good but is for a special people sio kila mtu sio wote ni walio jianda it is for those who know heaven is prepared and they have prepared themselves to get into heaven wamejua mbingu imeandaliwa na wamejianda ili waingie mbinguni let me tell you you will not bump into heaven by a mistake wewe wacha kucheza na Mungu wewe cheza na dini lakini hautacheza na Mungu You can play with the religion you will not play with God. The Bible says God is never Si useme. Yaani Mungu 
Kiswahili wanasema the akiwi. You can never mock God. You can never trick God. You can never play with God. Bwana wetu apae sifa. And so if you want to get into heaven, lazima ujue heaven is a prepared place. It has taken Christ years. Eh, hey, akianda. He said I go to prepare. He is still preparing. Ikisha atarudi. Na Biblia inasema we will be mahali alipo hapo tutakuwa. Are you ready for heaven? Siulize mwenzako, are you ready for heaven? Heaven is a good place. Nakwambia, it is the big, biggest mistake of your life. Ukose kwenda mbinguni kwa sababu ya raha za hapa duniani. Eh, hey, unaweza kuona kama ni zadhamana. But I want you to hear me. They are non comparable. Haziwezi linganishwa. Haziwezi fananishwa. My brother, my sister, hakuna kitu kinaweza kufikia the mana ya mbinguni. Katika vyote unavyoweza kuhesabu. Haijalishi kama ni fedha na dhahabu za dunia hii. Unaweza kuzipata lakini kama zitakutenganisha na Bwana Yesu, they are not worth it. Hear my word. Hear me say to you, ya kwamba hazistahili. Iwe ni anasa, whether it is men or women, whether it is pleasure ya kwenda disco na kujianika uchi, haistahili na iwezi linganishwa na urembo na ubora na maisha za mbinguni. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. If you miss heaven, you will have missed life. Praise God. It may sound very simple. Lakini nataka uelewe ukikosa kuingia mbinguni wewe unayenisikiza leo. If you will not make to get into heaven, you will have missed the reason of your being. Yani, heri ya unge zaliwa because it will be torture and a torment for anybody who misses heaven. Utakosa urembo na ra ya maisha. The glory of life is in heaven. Si hapa. Hapa hakuna kitu. Maisha yako mbinguni. Bwana yetu apoe sifa. Maisha yako wapi? And the Bible say Christ went to prepare a place for us. Na akasema nitarudi. So that mali nilipo hata nanyi muwepo. And he has left us here to prepare. Every time we preach in the church, we are preparing believers and ourselves the preachers for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Na kuandaa wewe na ninajiandaa ili nipatikane mbinguni na tuwe pamoja na wewe. My brother be there, my sister be there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Na kuambia usikose will know ukikosekana tutajua. Kwa sababu mbinguni tutajuana. Yes. Tutajua wale tulikosa, tunaulizana hapo heaven gate. Mumeona nani? Ni nani aja onekana? Who is missing? Who is not present? Alienda aje? Yani alikuwa na tudanganya hii miaka yote alikuwa na cheza na sisi. Tulimuona kanisa ni kumbi alikuwa na tuada. Tell your neighbor be there. And it's a serious matter you must be prepared. Hallelujah. Bana wetu wapoe sifa. You know I'm saying this because God desires that each one of us understands the essence of preparing to meet with God. Na mbinguni hatuta kutana na mungu tuachane. Hizi zingine tunajianda. We may experience him for a season and the season can come to an end. Yani tunaweza kuwa na wepo wa kiungu. And that's why you can prepare for a Sunday service. Na baada ya ku experience your wepo wa Mungu, ukija the next Sunday and prepared 
the service is not the same. Mungu haja badilika. But every time you want to meet with God, every time you want to experience God, you must be prepared to meet with God. Hallelujah. Unataka kukutana na Mungu, lazima ujiandae kukutana na Mungu. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. I want us to I want us to look at several occasions ambazo watu walijiandaa na Mungu aliwaambia wajitayarishe kukutana naye kama vile alivyosema na Waisraeli in chapter 4 of Amos where we have read uh, mstari wa 12 and I'm, I'm looking at this because I believe church we are headed for a new season you have not heard me i'm saying kanisa we are in a time of transition kwamba tuko katika hali ya kutoka from one level to another level tuko katika hali ya kuvuka kutoka katika upande mmoja and across to another side we are in a transition period and we must be ready kwa sababu hatujivukishi bali tunavukishwa e bwana unipandishe sio mimi nijipandishe lakini bwana anipandishe Hallelujah. Bwana wetu asifiwe. You know and I believe and I'm speaking I believe by the spirit of the living God that I know God is about to do something in this church. That God is about to do something new in our midst in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we need to get prepared for it in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe God is about to release something new in our midst. Kitu ambacho si cha kawaida. Hallelujah. Wanaotarajia watakula. Those who are waiting and expecting from God, they'll be partakers. Wataona njia katika those nyika. Wataona mito katika jangwa. Because God and our God is doing it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bwana aliuliza Israeli, nafanya jambo jipya. Shall you not perceive it? Where are we see? Where are ushikanishi? Where are usiki? You are not sensing it in the spirit. Are you able to sense that God is about to do something? You know We are talking about revivals in Kenya. But who is going to buy this revival? Who is going to see it coming and prepare for its coming? Hallelujah. I believe if you are not ready for it, utakuwa unasikia kulikuwa. Lakini kama utajiandaa, you'll partake of it. You'll tell people I was there. I saw it. I experienced it. Hallelujah. I believe that we are at an edge. We are just at the edge of a mighty move of God, of a mighty revival, of a mighty manifestation of the power and the glory of God that the church needs to get prepared for in the name of Jesus. That we need to expect to see not the ordinary but the extraordinary. I believe God is moving us from the natural to the supernatural. From the carnal to the spiritual. Hallelujah. Yani bwana atusongeshe atutoe katika ile maisha ya ya mwili na nyama. Yani atuingize into the spiritual life 
which we were called for, which we are ordained for, for which we live. Hallelujah. I believe God is about to do something. But we need to get ready for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, every time God was to make a shift, every time Mungu alikuwa asukume watu, our toy from their present to the next level of the unknown. Alitaji wajiandae. Alitaji wajitarishe. And I believe, church, we must get prepared for what God is about to do in our lives, in your life, in my life, and in this church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bwana wetu wa And we need to be prepared for it. The Bible say, the book of Exodus chapter 12, I want us to look at the first instance. Exodus chapter 12. The Bible say, in verse 1, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. God is addressing the children of Israel. He's about to make a change. God is about to bring a new order. God is about to reveal to them a new dimension of his presence which they had never known or experienced before. Praise God. I want to start afresh with you. I want to restart you. Nataka kwanza upia na nyinyi. I want to start you a new life. Nataka kwanza maisha mapya ambayo hamja ya zoea, hamja ya jua, maisha ambayo si ya kawaida kwenu. Kuna yale mmezoea, maisha ya kuteswa, maisha ya kuonewa, maisha ya kunyanyaswa, maisha ya kuwa watumwa. Maisha ya kupigwa. Lakini, I want to start a new life with you. Tell your neighbor God can restart you. It doesn't matter where you have lived and how long you have been there. God is able to bring a change into any believer's life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, he was telling them, Nataka kwanza upia na nyinyi. I want you to forget. You remember what he has said in Isaiah 49. He said, forget the former. Star umamba ya kale. He said to Israel in Isaiah 43. Kwamba, forget. Yale mambo ulio beba. When God is about to do something new, the first thing, he must prepare you to get rid of the old. Praise God. Lazima ya kale haiwezi kuwa mixed na ile mpya. Yesu alisema new wine cannot be poured into old wine skins. Hawezi kumwambia Mungu, God I want to experience you anew and you are carrying the old wine skins. Umebeba zile viriba za zama, zimejawa na mashimo, zimejawa na kutu na takataka. Haziwezi kubeba mvinyo mpya. When God says I'm doing something new, he says prepare for something new. Come afresh. Jo unaupia. Leta viriba vipia. Come when you are ready for a new touch, a new anointing, a new revelation, a new move of God because the old 
cannot contain the new. Amen. Bana yesu sifa. The old cannot contain the new. And so when God says prepare, he's saying get ready. Take away the old. Ondoa za zama. Ondoa zile zinaweza kuwa ni visababu. Ondoa zile vitu zinaweza kuwa ni vikwazo za kuzuia the move of God in your life. The freshness of the presence of God in your life being manifested. Mana, if you don't change, you don't receive. Hallelujah. When you are not prepared and you want God to do something new, atafanyaje, awezi kutumia vyombo vazama kufanya mambo mapya. Bana wetu apesifa. Every time God is about to do something he calls for preparation. Anaita watu na kuambia wajitayarishe. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. And so God was telling Israel, ya kwamba ninataka kuanza na nyinyi. This will be your first month. Anasema this month shall be your beginning of month. It shall be your first month. I want to start afresh with you. I want you to forget the old calendar. Bana asifiwe. I want you to forget the old month. Nataka msau ile miezi mmekuwa mkihesabu na mwanze upya na hii iwe ndio your first month. According to our Gregorian calendar. Calendar yetu ile tunatumia ni kwamba that time Wakati wanatoka katika inji ya Misri, it was not the first month. It was somewhere around October. Uko. Lakini mungu wanawambia, I want to start afresh with you. Nataka kuanza na nyinyi upia. I want to begin afresh with you. Prepare yourself to start afresh. Hallelujah. You know, many times believers we never move with God. We never experience God at a higher level of revelation and a manifestation because we stay and we hold and love the old. Tunashikilia mambo ya kale. Tunashikilia wakati wangu nilipo okoka. E kulikuanga. E nilipo okoka. Nilikuwa ninafanya. Nilipo okoka. Maisha ilikuwa na leo. Let me tell you. Even as a nation. Bana asifiwe. Kama tunataka kusonga mbele. We must forget the past. So that we can start afresh. And move on and move forward. Hallelujah. Hatuwezi shikilia za kale. Na tutarajia mambo mapia. When you hold to the old, you stick to the old and you keep the old and live with the old. When you want to see God in your life, you must let the past go and embrace a new dimension with God. Yani useme, I want to see God with the freshness. I want the touch of God in my life. I want to experience God in a way I've never experienced him before. That is why he was telling the children of Israel, Lazima mkubali kwanza upia na mimi. Bana wetu wapewe sifa. Na hapo ndio mungu alipo waita. When you read that chapter 12, that is where God instituted the Passover. Bana asifiwe. Akawambia ninataka kwanza upia na nyinyi. You have been slaves. I'm bringing freedom. Na katika uhuru, Ninataka muelewe how, you know, we are going to relate. Vile tutakuwa tuna ushirika. And they started training and teaching them about fellowship with God through the pass of Alam. Hapa ndiyo akawaingiza katika pasaka to introduce them to the blood of Christ and the redemption, their redemption. Waelewa ya kwamba God is about to redeem us. Hallelujah. 
kwamba waelewa kuna ukombozi unakuja that is they celebrate the passover lamb wanapoichinja na damu inemwagika wanaambiwa na muibake katika your post your door post he is telling them i'm coming to deliver you i'm coming to redeem you i'm coming to save you i'm taking you out hallelujah i'm about to do something new God was telling them I'm about to do something new. I'm about to change your lives. I'm about to change your status. I'm about to change your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm about to change your name from slaves to free men. I'm about to change your status. You'll no longer be slaves of Egypt. You'll be the free men and a special people to God. Hallelujah. God was instituting something new but he calls for their preparation and I'm be prepare tell Israel to prepare themselves na watafute kondoo maana kondoo wa kuchinja let them prepare themselves because I'm visiting Egypt today for your freedom anawaambia ninatembea Egypt kuwaweka huru and he is coming but they must be ready let me tell you any israelite who was in egypt and never prepared himself that night and they lived like an egyptian he lived in egypt after israel has left ka kama mu egypt bwana akisema prepare you keep the egyptian mentality you keep the slave mentality and you want to go home with us i was a cani If you want to go with us embrace change. Hallelujah. Eh, hey, if you want to enjoy the freedom God is bringing in our lives. Eh, hey, kama unataka kufurahia maisha mapya ndani ya Kristo and the newness of life in the church and the goodness of God and the power and the presence of God in the move of the revival then you must embrace it and prepare for it. Hallelujah. If you are not ready for it, you will not partake of it. Kama utajitayarisha, hautashiriki. That is the truth. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. Hey, and so he told Israel, prepare yourself, jitayarisheni. And the Bible shows us that walijitayarisha kwa kushiriki katika ile Passover lamb. Kwanza watayarishe kila moja kulingana na size ya family na kila mmoja akule na si ya kupikwa akisema ni ya kuchoma zote tunakula nyama choma siku hiyo hakukua hakukua na boiro bwana asifiwe bwana alisema leo kila mmoja tunakula nyama choma praise god na wote waliotaka kutoka walikusanyika pamoja wakashiriki pamoja ama wakakula pamoja na wakakombolewa pamoja bwana wetu apewe sifa when god is about to do something in the church and you want to be part of it identify with the church get involved in it participate in it kula pamoja nasi kama inayatarishwa na maombi come let us pray together bwana asifiwe kuna watu wanataka kula pasaka wakiwa nje. Mwambie mwenzako it is not possible. You cannot eat the Lord's supper when you are an outsider. Kama wewe si wetu. Kama wewe ni outsider, bila inasema usishirikishwe. Lakini ukitaka kushirikishwa ingia katika nyumba ya hey, Israeli, ingia ndani. Get inside. Usika. Kula pamoja nasi. That is what the Bible says. If you want to see what God is doing, if you want to experience the things of God, hazikuliwi na walio nje na wasikuliwi na spectators ni za walio ndani. Hallelujah. Bwana wetu asifiwe. So that is why God said get involved, prepare yourself, get in the house of Israel. Kubali mali kumepaa kwa damu hapo ndio kwenu. Hallelujah. Shida kuna wakristo wanataka the protection. Wanataka protection lakini wako wapi? Hati mukiomba, muniombea hata mimi damu inifunike. 
Muniombe hata mimi ukombozi na umekataa kuingia nyumba iliyo na damu. Tunakufunikaji ukiwa nje na nje kuna kifo. Utakufia huko nje. Bana wetu ainuliwe. I pray that you understand what God is saying. God is in the at the verge of doing something in the house of God. Naamini kwamba we are at a an, at a time ambapo Bwana anatamani adhibitishe aonekane watu wa muheshimu watu wa mpende watu wa jimwage kwake wholeheartedly but he cannot walk with the people who are not prepared for this move watu ambao wanataka Mungu lakini maisha yao waishi nje wanataka Mungu lakini tabia zao zina watu wa nje si za nani If you want to participate in the things and the move of God, get inside. Hallelujah. Mwambie mwenzako ukitaka kushiriki ingia ndani na utulie na ukae ndani. It's a long night but we must stay together. It's a long night but we must stick together. Hallelujah. Inaweza kuwa ni usiku mrefu lakini kama Bwana amesema usitoke nje usitoke nje tafadhali. Ukitoka nje nje kuna kifo. Sibile inasema hivyo. Walio toka nje unafikiri wali survive? Bwana asifiwe. Stafadhali katika jina la Yesu. The Bible say that night walio ingia katika ile bwana aliwaitia. Mungu aliwa start na aliwa start katika ku participate in the Passover. Na katika Passover Bana bila inasema eh, they gotten used with the blood walikuwa wamezoea kwamba damu inaweza kuwa eh, defense mechanism hawakujua but that night god started introducing himself in a way they had never known anawaambia i'll protect you with the blood on your lentils nitawashikilia na nitawatunza nitawalinda and you know the things of god zile tunasemanga they are foolishness to the learned and educated mind hiyo wanaotaka ku reason with them lakini kwa Mungu hiyo ndiyo inaitwa imani haleluya kwa Mungu hiyo ndiyo inaitwa kumjua Mungu na kumgojea na kumtarajia Mungu and that's why he's god and he's not man he is not likened with men he is god and he is comparable to none other haleluya na kutoka siku hiyo bana akamwambia the second thing ni kwamba hii itakuwa an ordinance that will keep remembering god started them something called passover ambao wako wamejua wameanza kuwa na celebration days bwana ameanza kuwa introduce kuambia i'm giving you a feast na waingiza katika feast yangu i have prepared for you a feast so that you can be celebrating and a time again remember what i did in egypt hallelujah si bwana akuingiza katika msimu mpya ambao si wa kawaida na si ule umezoea maisha mapya katika ukristo wako ninakuombea katika jina la Yesu utoke katika yale ya kale na utoke katika ile tabia za zama na utoke katika ile hali umezoea za Misri eh ingia katika nyumba ambayo bwana anaanzisha Israeli upya bwana asifiwe And the Paris paid in this parts of a lamb. Eh. Hey, Bwana Yesu ainuliwe. Unajua hata kama wange celebrate Egypt, wali celebrate kama watumwa. Hapa hawaku celebrate kama watumwa. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. May God usher you into a new season. I pray in the name of Jesus. That each one of you may God usher you into a new season in your spiritual life. Katika maisha yako Bwana afungue mambo mapya. Bwana afungue maisha mapya. Bwana akuelekeze katika mkondo mpya ambao it is the Lord is speaking and guiding and not you. And not other people. May God speak to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That night was the last night of those Israelites being called slaves that night god changed their name a new beginning mwambie mwenzako a new beginning 
mwanzo mpya god restarted them aliwapatia is the last thing akawaambia this night ninawavukisha may god deliver you today in the name of jesus naomba bwana akupatie mwanzo mpya wewe you are stuck with your old life and you are stuck with the life of burdens and the bondage and the pains and the sorrows may the lord deliver you in the name of jesus hallelujah there is power in the blood of jesus tell your neighbor there is power in the blood of jesus it can deliver you it can save you it can heal you it can give you life it can give you peace it can give you joy hallelujah the bible says it speaks better things ikunene maisha mapya may this blood speak to you a new life in the name of jesus may god give you a new beginning in the name of jesus bwana alipatia watu ambao walikuwa wamekaa katika utumwa 430 years overnight one night bwana akabadilisha within one night bwana akawatoa from being called slaves akasema you are the free men in god hallelujah si mungu wetu anaweza is there anything too hard for him bwana wetu asifiwe I want you to see they prepared themselves and they received an elevation. Walijitayarisha na wakashirikiana na Mungu and they participated and they cooperated with God and the God delivered them. Kuna watu wanataka ukombozi. Wanataka Mungu ahusike maishani mwao. But they are not cooperative. Hawashi hawataki kuhusika They don't want to play their role. Wanataka Mungu awasukume, awalazimishe. If you don't want to stay inside, get out. Eh. Hey, kama unasikia ndani hautaki kukaa kuna joto, basi unaruhusu ya kwenda nje ukakufe. Bwana asifiwe. That is good gospel. Eh. Hey, ukiwa kanisani kaa kama mtu ambaye aliye kanisani. Ishi kama mtu aliye kanisani kaa kama aliyeokoka eh hey, tosheka na wokovu ndio uweze kupata baraka za wokovu kaa kama walio ndani hapana kaa kama walio nje na unataka kuwa ndani stay like a believer act like a believer walk like a believer talk like a believer yes be one with us in the name of jesus hallelujah bwana asifiwe Praise God. The Bible said the second preparation which you read in the book of Exodus chapter 19. When God is about to give to the children of Israel his terms of engagement How are we going to live together as a nation? Sasa mmekombolewa. Mmetoka Misri. Ili muweze kumheshimisha Mungu maishani mwenu. There must be terms of engagement ama TOR. Eh, ile tunaitanga the terms of reference. Ile tunajua ya kwamba this is your role this my expectation nitarajia nitafanya hivi in this engagement mimi nitafanya hii na hii na hii na wewe utafanya hii na ile bwana wetu apewe sifa in chapter 19 verse 10 exodus chapter 19 verse 10 God says in verse 10 Then the Lord said to Moses Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes praise God They are preparing themselves to meet with God 
Bwana asifiwe. The Bible says and let them be ready for the third day for on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Zion in the sight of all the people. Yaani wanajiandaa kukutana na Mungu. Siumwambie mwenzako I want you to remind somebody prepare to meet your God. Bwana yetu apasifa. And Moses has been given the mandate to help and guide the people to meet with God. Asaidie Israeli ikutane na Mungu. Because I believe God is ever desiring. God is ever willing. God is ever ready to meet his people. Kwamba Mungu anatamani sana akutane na wale wanaoitwa wake. Anatamani sana akutane na wewe unaitwa a believer. Anatamani sana ajionyeshe kwako. We read it the other Sunday in a Second Chronicles where he says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Akitafuta mtu ajionyeshe yeye ni mwenye nguvu. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. God is so willing aonekane maishani mwako. God is so willing ajulikane ni Mungu wako. God is so willing ajiheshimishe kupitia wewe. Bwana asifiwe. And God told Israel kwamba ili nikutane nanyi you must be ready to meet with me. Lazima mjiandae kukutana nami. And that's why in in uh, uh, verse 10 alisema akaambia Musa Go to the people and consecrate them for two days. Akamwambia kwenda watayarishe. To consecrate people it's another way of saying set them apart. Yaani watenge. Let them know they are a separate people. That is to say ili Mungu akutane na watu God does not meet with the multitudes he meets with those who are ready and separated and prepared for him bana asifiwe watu walio na moyo wa kukutana na Mungu they must understand lazima wajitayarishe kukutana na yeye and go to meet Israel aliwaambia siwezi kuja tu vile maisha yenu inakuwa lazima mjiandae kukutana nami na ili nije katikati yenu i will come in your midst naja lakini i'm giving you two days of preparation na mungu akawaambia ndio mjitayarishe consecrate yourself to consecrate means set apart yani mujitenge mujiondoe katika maisha yanayo wanajisi mujitoe katika maisha inayo wachafua mujitoe katika maisha inayo mzuia Mungu Bwana asifiwe it means purify them yani kwa njia nyingine watakaze wasafishe watenge to sanctify means purify and set apart yani safisha na uweke kando Bwana wetu apewe ili waweze kuhitimu kukutana na Mungu inamaanisha kwa njia nyingine you must be ceremonially clean to meet with God Bwana Yesu asifiwe Hallelujah Praise God Sinataka uelewe kukutana na Mungu si kitu cha kurukia tu It's not something you wake up in the morning and you say oh I want to meet with God I want to have time with God today and you are not ready for him kukutana na Mungu kunahitaji kujitayarisha let me tell you if you'll meet with god in your life kama utakutana na Mungu maishani mwako kama Bwana atakunenea wewe kama Bwana atabadilisha maisha yako you must prepare yourself to meet with god lazima ujiandae kukutana na Mungu Bwana wetu apewe sifa aliambia Israeli prepare yourself na akamwambia muoshe nguo zenu. Bwana asifiwe. 
That is to say be clean. Eh, musafike, mkuwe wasafi katika maisha yenu so that when I come, yani nisione uchafu. In other words, he was saying get rid of any filthiness. He was telling them be ceremonially clean. Muwe wasafi. And let me tell you, people want to see God. People want to experience God. But they don't want to pay the sacrifice of meeting with God. Usafi. Tell somebody, cleanliness. Nasi usafi tu wanguo. Usafi. Hey, mungu wa kutanangi na watu wachafu. Mwai kujua hivo. Hata ukitudanganya na mungu anajua wewe ni mchafu. Mungu wa kutanangi na wachafu. God will not come into your life and speak to you when you are living in dirt and sin and wickedness. Anajua. God is for people who are set apart. Mungu ni mungu anatembelea watu wamejitenga. Watu wamejiweka. Wamejitayarisha. Wameweka maisha yao. Wamejitenga na uovu. Wamekataa dhambi. Wamesema I want to see God. Hallelujah. We can't be expecting God in a mighty way and we are not separate. Hatuishi maisha ya kujitenga. Kujitenga si tutoe kwa ulimwengu. Yesu alisema si waombei watoke ulimwengu. Kujitenga si kuacha hii dunia ati uende ukakaange mbinguni. Be here but be holy. Be here but be clean. Hallelujah. E uwe hapa lakini uwe. Bwana Yesu ainuliwe. Siwaambie mwenzako be, be clean. Safika mbele zake Mungu. Eh, yeah. uwe msafi mbele zake Mungu. Mungu atembei na watu wachafu. God is not for the dirty people. God is not for those who defile themselves. Wanasa zote za ulimwengu na wanataka kuona Mungu maishani mwao. God is a holy God. And a God is a clean God. And a God is a righteous God. Hallelujah. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. And that's why Bwana anapoanza kujiandaa, he's bringing them. Anawaambia I want to lift you up. Nataka munielewe. Nataka kukutana nanyi. Nataka kuweka njia zile tutakuwa tuna engage me and you. How do we relate? Eh hey, mtaniheshimu based on what? Mtanipenda based on what? Mtaniti based on what? Hallelujah. And so God was calling Israel for a preparation so that he can give them his TORs. Ile tuna relate aje. This is just in chapter 19, chapter 20 ndio anaweka the law, the 10 commandments. Inaanzia pale juu. But ndio ni wapatie ile you know because I believe God was setting forth his guidelines for the new beginning in obedience. Anataka waelewe. We are starting a new relationship. We are we have begun a new chapter of relationship. And I expect obedience from you. How do you say I have obeyed the Lord? What will you have done to say I have obeyed the Lord? Na ndio niwapatie hii terms of reference. Lazima mkuje kwangu mkiwa tayari. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. And so God was calling Israel. And that's what you find in chapter 19. You can go back to verse 5. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 inasema. Mm. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth is mine and it shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Bana wetu apewe sifa. Bana anatayarisha Israeli. I want to make you special. I want to visit you and I want to be a God to you but not like the gods you know. Sio kama ile miungu ya kule misri. Sio kama miungu ile munaenda kukuta kanani. I want you to know me as your God and respect me and obey with understanding. Hallelujah. Bwana anawaelekeza. Anataka wajue vile watamtii. He's setting up the 
the, the terms of obedience. Mutaniti aje, bana wetu wapewe sifa. And for God to do that, man anawainua, anaanza kuambia, you are a special people to me. God is lifting them. Anawambia nyinyi, mjue kwamba, nyinyi si kama watu wa mataifa. Ninapoona siwaoni kama watu wa mataifa. I want to see you in a special way. Nandiyo mjue nyinyi ni special kwangu. I want you to relate with me with a speciality. Bana wetu wapewe sifa. You know, for God to treat you as a special person, mtu wake wa, asie wa kawaida, lazima uwe umejuana na mungu, umejitolea kwake, umeelewa makusudi yake, umeelewa tamanio lake, umeelewa his expectations in your life. Bana wetu wapewe sifa. Uelewa bana anatarajia nini. And that's why God was telling Israel, prepare yourself. Don't just come to me. Prepare yourself to meet me. I'm revealing myself in a new way. Bwana anajifunua kwa Israeli na anawapatia sheria na kuwaelekeza lakini anataka wamuelewe. God never meets people are not prepared. Watu ambao hata akiwapatia sheria zake hawatati hawataziheshimu. God is not ready to meet with such people. Na ndio ninasema hata wewe a believer Born again believer, unampenda Mungu. You must be ready if you want God to lift you higher, even in obedience. Unajua katika kutii, kuna watu wameshindwa kumtii Mungu kwa sababu they have never prepared themselves to live an obedient life. Hello? Yaani lazima ujiandae, usema najua kutii Mungu itanigarimu. Itanifanya njinyime vitu ambavyo ninapenda. Itanifanya nikatae kutenda tu vitu ambavyo ni tutamu kwangu. Itafanya ni mti mungu lakini kwa garama. Nitalipa garama ili ni mti mungu. Inaweza kunigarimu hata nisitajirike. Pana asifiwe. He, ninaletea utajiri naona ni hii. Lakini kwa sababu nimeokoka, ninasema nimeokoka na kwa sababu na mpenda mungu. Na sita vunja sheria zake, nimekata. Bana asifiwe. Obedience requires preparation, acceptance and ownership. Useme, I'm ready to obey God. Niko tayari kumti mungu. And let me tell you, Hawe kuna maali ya utapanda until you learn to obey God. Kuna vitu mungu watafanya na wewe. Kuna maali mungu watajidibitisha maishani mwako until you learn to obey God. Na kumti mungu si mdomo. Bana asifiwe. You see the first one, mungu amewatayarisha, amewambia na watoa katika utuma. They have been delivered from sin. But they don't know how to obey God. Mungu anawambia sasa ninataka mjue kuniti. And he is calling them for consecration. Anasema jitayarisheni. I'm about to give you my law. Jitayarisheni. I'm about to tell you how you love me. Hey. Anza na the first verse of Exodus chapter 20. Kwamba kama ni kumpenda mungu wezi kumpenda nusu. Bana asifiwe. Kwamba utakuwa na mungu mwingine wakuenda kuabudu. Wakuenda kupea ibada, wakuinamia, iwe ni mwanadamu. Hallelujah. I always tell people, read Exodus chapter 20, the second commandment, and you'll see the error of man. Mwanadamu anaona mnyama, anaenda anatengeneza anabudu. Mwanadamu anaona mtu wa mamulima, anaenda anatengeneza anabudu. When you read chapter 20, 20, mungu alikuwa na wambia, I'm preparing you to be my special people. Hauta inamia sanamu na uniite mungu. Mwana asifiwe. Na haka wambia usiwe na mfano wa kitu chochote. Kilichoko juu mbinguni. Kilichoko duniani. Na hata zilizoko kwa bahari uko ndani. You are not supposed to bow to anything. Whether, unasikia wale watu wana venerate, watu wanaanza kusema saintiso and so utuombe. Yo sini mtu wa hapa duniani. Sini kweli. Sini mtu wa duniani. 
Sasa umeanza kumuita ati Mungu akuombe kama nani? Veneration is not godly. And I'm telling you this because you are, you must be a special people to God. Hamwezi kuwa watu wa kawaida na mumpende Mungu. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. Na ndiyo sababu Mungu alitaka waelewe ili tuingie katika the second level. Yaani unataka kupanda na Mungu. Second level is called obedience. Your obedience to God must be unquestionable. Yaani kutii kwako kwa Mungu isiwe ina maswali. Eh si ulituambia umeokoka na mbona jana tulikuona? Mbona jana kulikuwa? Mbona jana kulienda? Hapana. As much as it is called obedience to God, pay the price. Lipa hiyo gharama. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. And so God called Israel at the second time akiwaambia consecrate yourselves because ili awapandishe to that level of relationship lazima wawe tayari. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. Hallelujah. The third level wanaingia katika inji ya ahadi. God is bringing them to the promise. And the God is calling them. Anawaambia prepare yourself. Niko tayari kuwaridhisha. Eh, hey, first one ameokomboa from slavery. Second level training in obedience. Third level inheritance. Hallelujah. Na inahitaji nini? Preparation. Si mwambie mwenzako you must be prepared. kutoka katika dhambi kumtii Mungu kushiriki ama kushirikishwa katika ahadi zake Mungu it calls for preparation Bwana wetu apewe sifa Joshua the book of Joshua Mungu alimwambia Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 Joshua chapter 1 verse 2 As true says Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan you and all these people to the land which I'm giving to them the children of Israel he's saying arise go over this Jordan now let's go to chapter 3 verse 5 Chapter 3 and verse 5 And Joshua said to the people Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you Bwana wetu apewe sifa Verse 7 of the same chapter And the Lord said to Joshua This day I'll, I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I'll be with you bana wetu apewe sifa praise god tell somebody inheritance urithi ama kuridhishwa how many of us desire the gifts of god hallelujah ni wangapi wangetamani kuona bwana akimanifest katika maisha yao Yaani katika uwepo nguvu ishara na miujiza. Yaani ukitembea hivi, you are a powerhouse of the presence of God. Mungu ananena na wewe. Mungu anaelekeza watu kupitia kwako. Mungu anaponya wagonjwa, anainua walio chini. Bwana anatenda miujiza kupitia kwa mikono yako. I want you to know it is possible. I'm saying it is inawezekana katika jina la Yesu. Bana wetu apewe sifa. God has never limited himself with any willing servant or vessel to manifest himself. Bana hajajipima kwamba huyu sitatumia. The Bible say any vessel that cleanses itself. Kila chombo kinacho na hapa Musa anasema ni Joshua anaita nini? Anasema sanctify yourselves. Verse 5. Bana wetu apewe sifa. 
Bana amekaa na hawa watu for 40 years in the wilderness tangu watoke Misri. Wamekaa jangwani miaka ngapi? 40. And is about now to cross with them. Awavukisha waingize katika ile ardhi ama inchi aliyoahidi baba zao aliyoahidi Abraham aliyoweka mkataba na Abraham a covenant na wakasil with an oath walipo ali Abraham alipopeleka sadaka bwana wetu apewe sifa and god is about to honor his promise bwana yu tayari kutimiza ahadi yake bwana yu tayari kuwaingiza katika kile ameahidi na ako tayari kuona it's coming alive God will never lie. I want you to hear me God is not a liar and the God will never lie. Has he said shall he not do it? Bwana asifiwe. Na kwa sababu miaka inaweza kuwa imekaa, wamekaa 430 years plus another 40 years in the wilderness but God is still faithful. And I want you to know God is still faithful even to you. Mungu wetu ni mwaminifu. And I can give you this assurance kwamba Mungu ni mwaminifu. He will never forsake you, he will never leave you. Ameahidi hivyo. Na atafanya, hata kosa kutimiza ahadi yake. God will honor his word. Tulisema neno la Bwana ni kamilifu. Imejaribiwa mara saba. It has been tested. Ni inafanya kazi. Bwana wetu apewe sifa. And so God is bringing these children kwa ile ahadi aliaidiana na Abraham but is a new generation remember their fathers waliotoka katika nchi ya Misri wakiwa 20 years and above only two people are in this multitude the rest wamekufia jangwani wale wote waliotoka Misri waliona miujiza ambayo Musa alitenda katika nchi ya Misri and they were 20 years plus pamebaki watu wawili walioaminika waliomwamini Mungu wakati wengine wanaona inchi wanaona majitu wanasema haiwezekani wanaona inchi hao wawili wanasema our god is able to give us the land amen heaven is for a prepared people eh na si waoga na si wenye kubahatisha ni wanaoamini and they are believing God to inherit bwana wetu apewe sifa wasioamini wamekufia jangwani and i pray none of you will die in the wilderness in the name of jesus my prayer ni kwamba zote tuvuke jordani tuingie kenan in the name of jesus hallelujah bwana wetu apewe sifa And the Bible say bana akawatayarisha akawaambia I want to exalt Joshua and exalt myself in your midst yani bana anataka kujitukuza anataka ajulikane yeye ni Mungu and I believe God and our God is ready to exalt himself anasema I'm looking for somebody who can identify with me nijionyeshe mimi ni mwenye nguvu bana wetu apewe sifa Walipofika hapa Bli inasema Bwana aliwatayarisha akasema we can't cross to the promise when we are not ready for it prepare yourself sanctify yourselves Bwana akasema jitakazeni ili baada ya hiyo tuvuke mto wa Jordan tuingie katika urithi wetu Bwana wetu apewe sifa Praise God And I believe Bwana na Mungu wetu anasema prepare yourself. Nikuvukishe utoke katika the years of wilderness. Uingie katika urithi wako. Utoke katika the years of torture and the lack and the years of manna. Hallelujah. Mana ilikuwa nzuri lakini ni ya jangwani. Mana ilikuwa tamu lakini ni ya wapi? Ninasema walipovuka mto Jordan wakaweka their first camp in Gilgal after they 
tasted the fruit of the land, manna ceased. Hallelujah. Yaani unajua unaweza kuzoea kila siku kulia kama mtoto. Watoto ndio wanapeangwa mana. Hello? Watoto ndio wanapewa? Umaikuwa na mtoto ameshika jembe anaenda kulima. Ama anarani business. Lakini si wanakula. Eh? Wanafanya kazi. Si wakitaka siku fees unalipa. Hiyo si ni maana. Chakula unawapea ya bure, unawalipisha. Bwana atupe sifa. Lakini as we grow, ndio uridhishe mtu amekomaa. Ndio uridhishe mtu ameitimu, anaweza kupewa shamba, akaimanage, akailima, akapanda viazi, akavuna, akapeleka zingine kwa gala ama akauza is a mature person. Watoto hawaingii kanani. I'm saying you must understand. Praise God. Kuna watu wanakaa kanisani lakini na kuombea katika jina la Yesu. Let me not finish the statement. In the name of Jesus. Na kuombea katika jina la Yesu. Kuna watu wamezoea maana mpaka ukawaingiza kanaani ni shida. Wanaweza kuanza kukuambia tunataka mana, tunataka mana, tunataka mana. Wako kanaani lakini wanataka? God forbid in the name of Jesus. The Bible say God prepared the people because ndio waingia katika urithi. They must be ready to be on us. Yaani watu ambao wamekomaa waseme I'm ready to live with God. I'm ready to serve God. I'm ready to stand for God. I'm ready to identify and fight for this God. Hallelujah. Unajua hata wale waligawiwa the other side. The family of Neftali. They kina Dan. Walio kuwa wabaki the other side. Waliambiwa the men of war will not remain. Zote tunavuka Jordani, tunaenda katika nchi ya vita, tunapigania ndugu zenu, tukimaliza then you can go back to your inheritance. Walio tayarishwa kuvuka Jordani ni watu walio hodari watu walio tayari kusimama na kupigana kwa sababu ya urithi wao haleluya kuna watu hawawezi kupewa urithi hata wakiona kajaya ndio wanasema hatuendi huko hatuendi Musa huko hatuwezi fika those cannot be given in waliishia jangwani but i pray for you the bible say God prepared these people. Na akawaambia sanctify yourself. The same thing he did. Jitayarisheni. And I'm telling you, if God will give us our inheritance church and we are getting there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We must fight. Because ninaamini kwamba God is telling us prepare yourself to see the salvation of the Lord. Prepare yourself to get into your land prepare yourself to inherit your promise in the name of Jesus hallelujah na mimi namwambia bwana mungu niko tayari i'm willing and ready i'm waiting to see you exalted bwana winuliwe na uimidiwe na uofiwe in this land watu watakuwa wanaongea mungu wetu that is my prayer because god is about to do a new thing God is about to lift us to another level. God is about to manifest himself and exalt himself in this nation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lakini we must be ready. Bwana aliambia Israeli ili muingie Kanaani you must be sanctify yourself. Tell your neighbor sanctify yourself. Eh, hey, hatu wengine na takataka. Hatu wengine na waoga. Hatu wengine na watu ambao wamezoea mana 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 we need men and women who are ready to fight to receive our inheritance in the name of Jesus Hallelujah Bwana wetu ape sifa Bwana akatayarisha Joshua akamwambia waambie Israeli wajitayarishe waoge vizuri tunavuka Jordan na tukivuka Jordan tunaingia Kanaani na tukiingia Kanaani 
at Gilgal. Mana inaisha. Hallelujah. Gilgal is a place of a new beginning. And I'm telling God, ninaomba katika jina la Yesu. He case tunamaliza na kuanza mwanzo mpya. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are starting anew. It will be our first month. In the name of Jesus. Tutasau mateso ya misiri. Yes, we'll forget the years of Ken being in the wilderness. Tutasau katika jina la Yesu. For the Lord our God will fight for us. And they give us our inheritance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord with us. Tell your neighbor God is about to do something new. But he's saying we get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Be prepared. Hey, sanctify yourself. Tell your neighbor get ready. Prepare yourself. Tunaingia kanani. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Na tafadhali usikufie kanani, usikufie jangwani. Tunaenda? Tunaenda pamoja. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blina sema, when they cross the Jordan River, ata waja pigana, the first thing mungu aliambia Israel ni kwamba, my covenant with Moses, Ile ahadi yangu na Musa lazima kwanza mti. Every male child must be akasema lazima tuondoe aibu zote because that was the place of rolling away the shame of Egypt. Hallelujah. Si baba tuondolee aibu katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. Sema baba tuondolee ibo. We are saying God take away the shame. Roll away the shame. Roll away the shame. In the name of Jesus. Bana tuondolee ibo. Bana tuondolee ibo za jangwani. Bana tuondolee ibo za misiri. Katika jina la Yesu. Because our God is able. Mungu wetu anaweza. And he's giving us the land. In the name of Jesus. He's giving us the land. In the name of Jesus. He's giving us the land. In the name of Jesus. The Lord, our God is about to do something new. Hallelujah. Can you perceive it? Can you perceive it? Hallelujah. Bwana wetu apesifa. Anasema when you perceive it, get ready. When you perceive it, be prepared. When you perceive it, prepare yourself. Si umwambie Bwana tunakataa aibu za jangwani na aibu za misiri na tunakataa katika jina la Yesu. Wanao simama mbele zetu hawataweza. Let me tell you. God remembered his covenant with Abraham. Akasema amwezi kuingia na takataka katika inji ya ahadi. Get circumcised. Hallelujah. Hey. Sumambia bana circumcise today. Tutairishe bana tuingie. We are willing to get in. And we are saying we are ready to be prepared. Bana tutairishe. Take away the shame. Roll away the shame. Roll away the shame of Egypt. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Kula tumeibika bana. And God says. I'm about to do something new. I'm about to do something new. And when God is about to do something new, He takes away the shame. He changes our name. He will change our name. He will change our position. He will change our status. Because He's God and because He's Lord. And He's unlimited. We declare His name. We declare His power. We declare His glory. We declare His majesty.